Okay. All right, so uh, setting and offensive system. So I think setting is the most heated topic in volleyball for some reason. Yeah, and I think part of it, you know, there's a lot of setters. They've had 10 coaches and been taught 10 different ways to set. Um, so, you know, I think one of the things we want to differentiate, I'll, I'll try to do a good job here of telling you this is a fact and then this is my opinion, right? So the, if it's a fact, we can base our methods around it. If it's my opinion, you can just take it or leave it. Um, but I'm going to give you the keys that we use uh, for our setters on the national team. Uh, then I use, obviously, at Georgia. And we'll build that into our offensive system as a whole. And I'm going to have to go at warp speed. The, the good news is we have some pretty good setters. I was watching you guys. So we, we're starting at a pretty good level. And uh, we'll go from there. So we're going to have a real simple drill to start where we're just setting the left side hitter. And we're going to go through our setting keys. And the first key is ball-shaped hands, right, because we're setting a volleyball, right, so we want to be shaped like a ball. So if you guys can show me what you think that means, ball-shaped hands. And then can you guys face the coaches? So I think we have a pretty good job here. When we're ball-shaped, the only thing I would add, I want the elbows out because they're going to have more power this way than if they're like this, right? So we're ball-shaped. So that means our hands are close together, right? We're setting a volleyball, not a watermelon. Uh, especially the lower level you go, you start seeing all this stuff. And uh, we want to keep the setters in here. So our elbows are out. We're ball shaped. This is a really good deal. All right. So we're going to set the outside hitter. And we want to be ball shaped before, during, and after. Right? And you guys are already at a pretty good level, so this shouldn't be too tough. So they want to be ball shaped before, like they just showed us. Then they want to be ball shaped during as they draw. And we're going to see this a lot with our kids. They're going to start like this, and then they're going to do all this stuff, right? We don't want to be complex. So ball shaped before, ball shaped during, and then ball shaped after. So we don't want to see this, right? And we don't want to see this or any of that stuff. So ball shaped before, during, after, and that will help us give a nice clean set. Right? Don't mess up. All right. All right, ball shape before, during, and after. Ball shape before, during, and after. Pretty good. Good. Ball shape before, during, and after. Okay, pretty good. I don't know if you felt a little bit of this, right? right. Let's come up together. Come up fast and together. Ball shape before, during, and after. Go ahead and show me how, uh, show me how you want to start. Yeah, remember that. Remember that. Yeah. Ball shape before, during, and after. She's before, during. That's really good. Nice. Good. All right. So I want to add one element to it. So we also have some tempos uh, that we want to run. We have a slower tempo, and then we have a faster tempo, and we'll build that up with each uh, set. We're going to start with the left side. Uh, this is a first step set. Uh, so a first step set is going to be called a hut. All right. So when the setter, if it's a first step set, when the setter sets the ball, you're going to be on what step? Which one? You're, you're right. All right. So we want our hitters, this is part of the offensive system, we really want our hitters to be taking four-step approaches. All right. So four-step approaches, it's a really good deal. It's the best way we know to convert horizontal momentum into vertical lift. And by taking four steps, we can really regulate our timing and then our, uh, lo and then our location step to the ball and get a good step close. So we want to be, show me a right, left, right, left approach. Right, left, right. You got it. Good, you got it. Okay, so when the ball's in her hands, go ahead and catch this ball. You're going to be on your right. You want to you feel the weight dead through the middle of your right step. All right, and that's going to be called a what? Anyone remember? A hut, a hut. So you're going to call for a hut twice. Just be hut, 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 and when she contacts the ball, you're dead on your right. Okay? As we're setting this ball, this is a huge part of our offensive system. Joe Trinzi was here this morning. He did a great study when we were with USA. And the best location for a set is one meter in, one meter off. All right? So if you have the antenna on the sideline, you want one meter in, one meter off. This is the best place to hit the ball, and it makes a lot of sense because she can accelerate at an angle. She can hit angle. She can hit line. She can do lots of good stuff. And we, uh, we charted this over thousands of hitters and thousands of setters. And at the international level, if the setter set one meter in, one meter off, regardless of who the hitter was, they were hitting 300, right? And then when we set them to the pin or passed, they went down like 250 points. They, they were hitting 100, right? When we set them too far off, obviously they had to roll shot that ball. That wasn't a good deal. 
And when we set them tight, it was just devastating. Right? Our hitters were hitting negative. So we want to be one meter in, one meter off. And when we air, we want to air inside and off. Right? So Because, again, I have options. I can accelerate into the ball. There's lots of good stuff going on. So, all right. So I'm, I'm talking a ton for them. That doesn't help you guys at all. So what's the key? Do you remember the key we're working on? Ball shape. She, oh, she got it. Ball shape before, during, after. And then if we can finish that one meter in, one meter off location, that'd be great. You're running a what? A hut, and then you're going to be on what step when she contacts the ball? you first. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so we're calling for a hut, ball shape before, during, and after, setting one by one. Here, ball here. Good. Good timing. Great. That was nice shape on that hut. Ball shape before, during, and after. Call for your set. Good. Okay, good. Nice hut, good hut, good. And we saw it there too, get it into our passing. So this is another fundamental block of our offensive system. You can see what happened. We passed some balls off the net and that was a really good deal. Then we passed a couple balls tight and you saw our setter have to do this, right? So we want to pass the ball about a meter and a half off the net in the center of the court, right? So we want, we want to have a target in our gym that we tell our passes to pass to. Because we just know from math, there's going to be a distributive mean around whatever we say. So if we tell our passers to pass here, right, then some balls are going to be here, some balls are going to be here, some will be over here, some will be over here, but they'll all be on our side of the net, right? If we tell them to pass right here, then some will be here, some will be there, some will be there, and then some are going to be over here, and we're going to lose all these balls, right? So you can see what happened when we pass on and off. So we're passing a meter and a half off here. We're setting our hat to one meter in, one meter off. Ball-shaped hands, running a hut. Good. All right, cool. So you can self-correct now. What Location-wise, what would you do next time? You saw it, yeah. And then you guys can tell that to each other. Like, hey, keep me off. She can take it. She's not sensitive. Here, a ball here. Good timing, good hut. Nice job. All right. So our second key was setting. So we want to be ball-shaped before, during, and after. Our second key is we want to finish through the ball. So we want to be completely extended when we finish through the ball. Right? And we're going to put it to the test here. We're going to go right into our second step set. So our second step set is going to be faster or slower? All right, faster, good. And we're going to call this set a go, a go. All right, so we have our four-step approach in place. And when the setter is contacting the ball, right, left, I'm dead on my left, right, when she contacts the ball, all right? And we're going to set a faster ball. So... This isn't going to work very well if we're not finishing. So if we see our setters doing this, right, or kind of finishing three quarters, we're not going to get a lot of speed on these balls. Definitely not going to have any accuracy on these balls, right? So we want to finish, finish high and fast through the ball. And it'd be great if you guys even hold your finish for a one count, just so you can see and learn from the finish, right? So finish high and fast. Let's see a fastball into that one-by-one one area. And you're going to call for a what? A go. You're on it. All right, here's this. Passing off the net, finishing fast. Cool. All right, so I'm just going to give you guys some direct feedback. And so let's go faster. Let's go faster. Ball here. Finish fast. Better. Keep it off the net. We're good. That was better speed. Let's go fast. Finish fast. Good. Let's go faster. So for, for the setters right now, because we're trying to find the speed, if you guys set it too fast and it goes all the way into the banners, I'm going to say great set. All right, but make sure you get the speed first, then we'll get the accuracy. Ball here. Finish fast. Good. Let's go faster. Let's see a real fast set. Finish fast through the ball. Yes, that's a go. That's a go. There we go. Good. Fast, fast. Better. That's better speed. We can go even faster. Second step, be on your left. Good. That's better speed. Good. You're actually too early there. You're almost on your third step. Go ahead and be on your second. Fast. Yes. All right. There's a go. We're getting it. All right. One more. Hitters, call for your set twice. Good. Pretty good timing there, and we'll go a little faster. We'll keep finding it. All right. So. 
That's the deal there. All right, so that's our go set. So going behind, let's flip the hitting line to the right side, and then maybe Sutter, you guys can come in from that side. We have one person here. And when we're setting back, it's the same thing. We're going to go ball shape before, during, and after, and we want to finish, right? We want to finish fast on the go. I want to finish fast on the red. The obvious problem is my head is in the way, right? The head is in the way. So we're passing really well right now. So when we finish, we just want to follow with our eyes as we finish to create a little highway for our finish to go through, right? So I'll just face you guys like this. If I follow with my eyes, I can finish straight back, right? Because my head is kicking back a little bit, right? If, I, if my head just stays still, I have to go around it, and it's going to go up and, and die inside, right? So I want to follow with my eyes as I set, and then I can keep it flat to the hitter's arm. Right? All right. So this set is going to be a red, all right? We're going to be on our second step, and she's contacting the ball. All right, this is a red. So we're going to go fast here. Here's a red. Good. Okay, so that would be a five. That's actually a really good five. Let's see if we can go faster. A five would be a first step set. A red is a second step. A little better. Good. See how fast we can go. Try and go too fast. Where's my hitter? One, two. That was pretty good red. You were on the move. Good. Let's see how fast we can go here. Call for your set twice. Second step. Good. All right, hitters, you're going to be dead on your left. One, two. Better. That's better. Hey, now we're getting it. That's good. Way better. So there's this uh, timing element here. You can see with our hitters, the timing's a little inconsistent, so we can, we'll get better on that as we keep working on it. You see with our hitters, it's the same thing that goes in our national team gym. You can see a little bit of this, and we want to be a lot more deliberate about being dead on that second step, right? Being really good with those four steps and getting that speed down. All right, so let's have a hitter on the left, hitter on the right, and uh, whoever passes can just go in for whoever hits, all right? So let's just have you guys go both ways for a second, all right? You can call for a go or a hut. You can call for a red or a five, all right? But if the setter is balanced, so if you think the setter has a reasonable amount of power on this ball, let's try and go fast. Right? So the faster set would be a what? And then a red. All right, so if she looks fairly balanced, let's go go and let's go red. And you guys are going to call for what you want. Setters, the most important thing for you guys right now is which key. Ball shape's important, but the finish is the most important thing because if we pop, it's not going to go fast, right? We want to really be extended when we finish our sets. See if we can learn from every set. Hey, better, better, good. Good talk, hitters. All right, our speed's getting better. Our speed is getting better. And then our hitters and setters can get a feedback loop. They want to talk after each set. Okay, we can go a little faster, and then let's make sure we're on our second step, not our first. Here, okay, ball here. Okay, okay, did you call for a go or a hut? You called for a hut? Oh, great. Okay, that was a hut. You're on your first step. Good. Ball here. Timing. Good, all right, so we're getting our speed down. I thought we actually, I thought that call on the go was right on. We might have even been early. Let's be on our second step, not third. Ball here. Here we go. All right, there's some legitimate speed there on that red. There we go. Ball here. That was great location, and then no slower. No slower than that. Yeah, good. All right, so then we're going to go to our next key here. Let's get our hitting line back to the go. Let's get our hitting line back to the go. All right, so we have, uh, actually, let's just have a line of hitters for a second. I'm just going to toss, and then we'll go back to passing. All right, so we have ball-shaped hands before, during, and after. We want to finish. I can't stress how important that is, and they're going to be working on that for the rest of their lives. All right, now we've got to make some movements to the ball. So unfortunately, they're not playing in a vacuum, right? The ball's not going to go exactly to them all the time. All right, so this is where 27 different theories of setting start to emerge, right? So I'm just going to tell you how I see it and how we got to the, how we got to the solutions that we got to. I think there's basically, if they're on the move, so I, if you can just catch this ball, I'm just going to toss it right around here. Just go and catch that ball. All right, so if she's pursuing that ball, she basically has three different movements she can choose from, all right? She could try, no, go ahead and catch it, please. Just stay right where you are. All right, she can try to put two feet down, all right? If she's running to the ball and putting two feet down, she has to slow down, 
Right? She has to slow down. If she slows down, she's going to lose a little bit of power. Right? All right, so that's, that's not our preference. She can jump to the ball, and that has its place sometimes. But, you know, if she's right here, I don't necessarily want her to jump to it if she doesn't need to. Although that's going to have its place certain times. Or she could try to go up one leg when she's on the move. And we just love that move. All right, we love it for a lot of different reasons. So if the ball's not here, we like the jump set a lot. And we'll get to the jump set in the middle. But if she's on the move, we love this lead leg move for a bunch of reasons. I can run without really having to slow down. All right, so that means I have a rhythm going into the ball. If I have a rhythm going into the ball, I have some power. Right? I like that a lot. If I'm going off this lead leg, I have to rotate the set, and that's going to create some torque, and torque creates power. That's the most efficient way to create power. So we like that a lot. We like that a lot better than trying to sling something over your body or trying to make this pike move. All right, so I get to run. I get to rotate. And then we also like that it's really simple. It gives me the same move every time, regardless of where I'm setting the ball. So we're going to get into that. But if I'm going to set a go, I do that. Right? If I'm going to set a quick, I do that. If I'm going to set back, I do that. So it's, it's not about the deception, but it is about it. I am difficult to read, and I do have lots of options because I'm making the same move every time. And uh, so there's just lots and lots of benefits to this move. So the key for us, face the ball. Face the target. Face the ball, face the target, which is what we want to do all the time. So even if I'm jump setting, if someone passes the ball perfectly to me and I'm going to jump set, I'm going to face the ball and I'm going to finish facing the target. Right? So now I'm just doing this off a of lead leg, right? So if the ball came to here where she's standing, I'm facing the ball, put down my lead leg, and then I finish facing the target. All right? So I'm going to give you guys some tosses. And we're just going to face the ball, put down our lead leg, and finish facing the target. And you guys can go ahead and hammer. All right. So, uh, all right, so your first step, so show me, let's go slow motion here. Just show me face the ball, face the target, if this is where the pass was. Face the ball, that's it, face target. All right, face the ball, <laughs> face the target, good. Show me without the ball, face the ball, face target. You got it, you got it. Face the ball. Face, yes. Face the ball. Face the target. Good. That's too easy. I got to challenge you. That's bad coaching. Here we go. Face the ball. Face the target. Good. Face the ball. Face the target. Good. Face the ball. Face the ball. Yeah, there you go. Face the ball. Face the target. Good. Face the ball. Face the target. Good. You clearly, you clearly do this move, right? Is, is that your move? Yeah, I can tell. Good. All right, so let's split up. Let's have, actually, let's, uh, yeah, okay, let's split up. Let's have a red line here also. Maybe each time you guys hit, we'll switch lines. Okay. All right, so now let's start setting back for a second, all right? So we're going to do the same move. We're going to face the ball, face the target, and set reds, all right? So I'm going to face the ball, and I'm going to finish facing the target, all right? So... Am I going to rotate faster or slower when I'm setting this ball? Faster. All right, so it's, it's going to be an aggressive move. Face the ball, face the target, right? And then that helps me get my speed. Thanks. So we'll hit reds. Here we go. Face the ball, face the target. Good. So go ahead and follow your set. Face the hitter. Face the ball, face the target. Better. Face the ball, face the... Whoa, stop, 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 stop. Yeah. You have, you have such nice hands. Come on back. Let your move work. So make sure you start facing the ball and not the antenna. Because yeah, now, now you can run. If you're here, you're going to have to do this little karaoke move. Face the ball. There we go. Okay, here we go. Good. Face the ball. Face the target. Good. Trust that pivot. Good. Face the ball. Face the target. Yes. Good. Good. Getting it. All right. Uh, actually, I'm going to pass. Let's have uh, you guys toss to me, and then you guys can rotate in for each other. All right, so we're going to go off a pass now. I'm just going to pass you around three meter line. You can set either way. Here we go. Face the ball, face the target. Good. Keep coming around. Face the ball. If you guys, uh, you guys back up a little bit, just bullet. Just underhand bullet right to me. All right, here we go. Face the ball, face the target. Good luck with that. It's my fault. Good. Face the ball, face the target. 
Yeah, can you feel uh can you feel how you're trying to square up before you contact? Yeah. So you, let's run directly to the ball and let's let your pivot square you up. Yeah. Face the ball, face the target. Better. Wow, you're really getting it. Good. Face the ball, face the target. Face the ball, face the target. Better. You're so close. Here, come on over here. Is this gonna let's come on back. You're really close. So you're doing a great job facing the ball. Start at the net. And I'm getting in the weeds here a little bit, but this kind of helps the teaching. So just go right, left, and stop on your right. All right, so there's a little bit of a chain. Once they put their right down, there should be some action on it. You should be rotating on that right, and then your knee is driving around, and then the whole body comes around. If we don't, if you don't have some action on your right, then you have to do it all up here with your shoulders. You're not going to feel like you have time. So as soon as this comes down, you're already starting to rotate. Yeah. So let's go ahead again. Face the ball, face the target. Rotate fast. Better, way better. Good. Face the ball, face the target. Good. Same thing. I think you're squaring up a little early. Run all the way to the ball, face the ball, and then get square on your rotation. Face the ball. Better, better. All right. So we have ball shaped hands before, during, and after. We have our finish. We want to finish fast. We have face the ball, face the target. Okay, now we get to the last key, which is really, really important for a lot of reasons. We want to read the pass. Read the pass, right? So setters are terrible at this, even at the highest level. So we just want to train the eyes all the time. So I would challenge us, you know, even when our setter is coming in early or even when we're doing our setting tutor, I'm never going to do this to her. I'm not going to toss a ball ever because she's never going to set a ball off of a toss in a game. So maybe if it's just her and I, maybe the bucket's right next to her, and she's holding the ball, and she tosses it to me, and I pass, and now we start. Because right? I always want her to read off the pass, because that's exactly what's going to happen in the game. Right? And you just think about it, right? We're tutoring our setters so much. I mean, over a course of time, I might have tossed her 2,000 times, and I could have passed her 2,000 times, right? So this stuff really adds up over time in terms of seeing. All right, so I want to read the pass. So... I'm going to move the ball around a little bit here. Now, setters, we want to go from a big focus to a narrow focus, right? So the rotation hasn't started, right? So I see the server. I got my passers. There's all this going on. As soon as she serves the ball and I know where it's going, I want to go from a big to a narrow focus. And I, if my passer is passing the ball, I want my setter to go from big to narrow. And, and I don't even want her on the ball. I want her on the platform, right? And you can tell a setter who's really done a good job of that, you see them getting like this and they read the platform, and their first step goes directly to what they see right off of the platform, right? Most setters are like this. They're setters all the time. So big focus to narrow focus. It's not about the ball. It's about the platform. When you see it coming off, right, then you're taking a good intentional first step to the ball. Yeah. Read this. Pretty good. Wow, nice. Read that. Okay, good. Yeah. Read this. Good. Read it off the platform. So we can tell by their first step if they read it. If their first step goes to the ball, they read it. If it goes in another direction, they guessed. Read this. Okay, good. Read this. Good. Read it first. See it off the platform. Read this. Uh, that was me. I shanked that. Good. Read this. Good. Stay patient. Get that narrow focus on my platform. Read this. Oh, what a read. Hey, you saw that. You saw me shifting over here. Nice read. Good. All right. So as that develops, you'll even get to the point where the setter, she'll start calling the trajectory of the serve. And she'll start seeing if a pass is doing that, the ball is probably coming flat and low, right? And if she's getting under it, it might be going higher. So your setters can get some really high-level reads going on, even to the point where they make your passers better because they're talking about what's going on. So it can, it can get to a pretty good level here. All right, so we're going to build in our rotations. So we'll start with rotation one. So we'll have the setters all start tossing you guys. We can go back to having passers and hitters now also. So let's have our setter coming in from row one, and you guys can all click in.
And we have all our keys in place. We have our offense in place now. We have our second step sets. We have a go and a red. All right, now we got to get it coming from rotations. We have our setting keys. Ball shaped hands before, during, and after. Our finish. Face the ball, face the target. And we want to read the pass. All right, so we have to teach some entries per rotation. We, we want to teach some entries per rotation. So in row one, setters, you're going to start with your left forward. Right? And you're going to think about hugging the sideline as you enter because we, all of our entries are trying to get you to move forward as often as possible, to have as good a vision of the court as possible. So I'm going to be going left, right, left, right. Okay. And I want to be balanced before she passes the ball right? so I can get a good read. So it's left, right, left, right. I'm balanced. I read it off the pass, and then I can make these nice moves to go ahead and set. All right, so let's see it here. Left, right, left, right. And then we're going to hit out of this also. So left, right, left, right. Awesome. Good entry. And then we're going to be balanced before she passes the ball. Left, right, left, right. Good. All right, we're getting that speed down. And then hitters and passers, you guys figure out how you want to click around. Let's have two passers, though. Left, right, left, right. Good. All right, we're getting that speed. Let's have two passers all the time. Good. Left, right, left, right. Took a little extra step there at the end. Good. All right. So they, they basically got it. Now the recomponent, we're going to teach this in every rotation. So usually row one takes a long time because we're putting all this stuff in, and then it gets a little faster per rotation. Now the read element. We're going to have four steps to most of our entries. Okay. The first two steps, I'm looking at the serve. The last two steps is all about the passer. Right? These first two steps, I'm trying to answer two questions. What do you think they are? Again, it's about the serve. Ooh, that's, that's it. She was saying deep and short. So those are the we're going to do later. Yeah, you're way ahead of the game. There's two basic questions that we need to know, and then we can start developing those wrinkles. Okay, I need to know where it's going. Right, so I want to know, like, you know, if the server's there, is she trying to pin me, right? If she's over there, she's serving over there, that's easy, right? All that stuff, right? So where's it going? That's a big deal. And then there's one other thing that might happen. I need to know. What? Close. There's something that might happen that I got to be on it if it happens. What's that? Yeah, yeah. So if it uh, goes off the tape, I need to know that, right? So the first two things, where's it going and is it going to hit the tape, all right? Because as soon as I know it's not going to hit the tape, I want to immediately get to who's getting served, right? So you'll see a real high-level setter. It's one, two, one, two, right? And then the lower you go the setter, it gets to like this. Right, and all that stuff. All right, so we want to keep our head up and make sure we're getting all this information. So as you're watching, where are they serving? Is it going to trickle? And then get on the passer before I even finish my entry, right? And then the game slows down. And uh, I'm going to move around here just like a server, so you guys need to be processing that. Here we go. Left, right, left, right. Good. She's on the passer before she even passes. Good job with your eyes. Okay. Uh, what about this one? Good, good. Nice swing. Good. Okay, pretty good. And then before we move on here from row one, the last element we're going to get into if we have time here, uh, the rhythm is really important. I'm going to get into the rhythm in a minute, but we're just trying to set it up here. We've got to make sure our four steps is four and not five, six, seven, eight. All right, so what we don't want, we don't want our setter creeping into court on this entry, right, because she'll be okay as long as they pass in front of her, but all these balls are going to be tough. All right, so... Be really good with the four steps just being four. It's just left, right, left, right, and I'm balanced before she contacts the ball. Left, right, left, right. Good, way better. All right, so we haven't even talked about it, but I hope we could see that rhythm she had going into the ball. Right? That's all we're trying to create is as good a rhythm as possible. Left, right, left, right. Good. That is so much better. Two great rhythms in a row. Good. Left, right, left, right. Good. 
Hey, you got better. I could tell you wanted to move, but you corrected yourself. Nice job. Good. Left, right, left, right. Good. That's right. That's part of the learning. Make sure we have a good feedback loop. All right, going to row four. All right, so we have some long entries, rows four and five. We have these long entries that we got to train. All right, in row four, we're over here, and we want to start in a running position, right? And we're going to go right, left, right, left, all right? In my left, I balance on my left, and I can see the passers. My back's to the net. I'm nice and open here. See, we want to start. We, want to, we keep on these long entries, rows five, row four. We want to keep our setter a meter and a half off the net, right? We don't need them up here. Passers are highly attracted to the setter. So if our setter is on the net, even if we're telling them to pass off, they're going to get these balls coming on the net. We don't want that, right? And it turns out, another big study we did, turns out our offense is better a meter off than it is right here anyway. So we want to be off the net here. So we keep our, meter, our setter a meter and a half off. And we're going to be right, left, right, left, and I'm balanced and ready to read. All right, so show me, uh, right foot forward, right foot forward. All right, just show me without the ball. Right, left, right, left. Good, good. All right, you're ready. Good. Right, left, right, left. Okay, we're passing off. Yeah, we're passing off. We're setting off. We're hitting in. Show me the entry. Right, left, right, left. Good, good. Right, left, right, left. Awesome. Good talk. Good. Remember to follow your set. That was a really nice entry. Show me the entry. Right, left, right, left. Good. Now you're cooking with oil. Here, ball here. Here we go. Right, left, right, left. All right, great. And when you finish your entry, let's have our back to the net. Try not to get too rotated to the sideline because that's going to happen. Right? right, left, right, left. Great entry. I like that back to the net. Sweet rhythm. All right, awesome. Good work. When we get to row five here, row five is going to be exactly like row four. You're just starting off the net, all right? So when we're in row four, we have our setters here, a meter and a half off the net. When we're in row five, we tell them to hug the three-meter line, all right? So we don't want to run towards the net because now I'm taking four steps and I'm not getting very far, right? And I still have all these balls over here I got to pursue. If I hug the three-meter line... Should be right around here, right, left, right, left. I can get right of center, and I have uh, a way bigger vision and a way bigger opportunity to have some good rhythms. So we got row five, and then we also have row six, and I'll get to row six in a second. So here's row five, and just hug the three-meter line on your entry. Left, right, left, good. Cool. And then setters, you guys can feel it. I know you've probably been trained to run towards the net. But the more you run towards the net, the less you're going to go that way, right? So try to get more of a line towards right of center. Ball here. Left, right, left. Good. Pretty nice go. Pretty nice go over there. And you, row five, you could be in a little bit more. Yeah, there. You could be right around there. Good. Ball here. Right, left, right, left. Good. Good speed. Get that finish going. You'll keep it off the net. Right, left, right, left. Good. All right, we're getting it. And they're actually, uh, they're doing a really good job with their eyes. We haven't even talked about it. But in these long entries, you can come up again in row five. On these long entries, and again, I thought they did a great job of it. Same thing. First two balls, I'm on the serve. Where's it going? Is it going to trickle? Last two, I should already be on the passer before I finish. They did a great job of keeping their head up and on the relevant information. Okay, row six. We're over here. Row six and row three and uh, row two. These are all the easy entries. All right? And we have, we have a big asterisk on this. They're easy because you don't have to do a lot of movement. But we still mess it up all the time, and a point is a point. right? So we just try to get our setters way more simple on these. So row six, row three, row two. All right, so row six is just a right, left, right. Okay, so I'm looking at the server, right, and then left, right, okay? Row three, let's just do that first, let's just do that. 
All right, row six. So start facing me. And then, yeah, you're going to face me on your right, and then your left right is going to get square to the passer. There you go. Good. Right, left, right. Pretty good. Right, left, right. Get square. There you go. Okay, we, we really like how her back was to the net there and not facing the sideline. Because if I'm here and the pass is behind me, I'm, I'm, I'm in big trouble, right? Every time a setter goes backwards, not very good things happen, right? But if my back is to the net and it's here, now I can face the ball, face the target, and it's an entirely different move. So we really like getting their back to the net in that situation. Right, left, right. Good. All right. Right, left, right. Good, <laughs> sweet. Awesome. All right. Row three. Row three, our middle blocker is hitting a slide set right around here. So we're going to start like this. We like to start like this. I can see the server. I can see the passer. And this is like a mini row four. Just a right, left, right, left. All right, that's all we're doing. So it's just a mini row four because you already did the center of the court. Who knows how to hit a slide? No one? Okay, so uh, we'll just, you guys can hit reds, but actually, let's get, just this a little more game. Like, let's get the hitter here where they would be in a row three situation. And then setters, you guys get off the court if you're not your turn. You guys split the court a little bit, and you can hit a red or a slide. It's up to you. Yeah. So here's a little, uh, so you would be, more, yeah, just, you just can't overlap her, so you get over there a little bit. Good. All right, here, ball here. Right, left, right, left. Good. Row three. Middle blocker would be more in the center of the court. You'd be over a little bit, so you don't have, just, yeah, give, make it a little easier on yourself. Right, left, right, left. Good. Good. Next. Middle blocker in. Yeah, set her over there. Yeah, there you go. Make it easier on yourself. Right, left, right, left. Good. Your pivot's getting better, facing the ball better. And right, left, right, left. Nice speed. That's our speed behind. Good. All right, and then the last row here, row two. Again, this, this should be the easiest, and we just got to be simple. It's kind of like Joe was talking about middle, middle earlier. Just stand there, right? It's the same thing with row two. The setter's right here. All right, this is where we do want them to start facing the sideline, right? I can see the server. I can see the passers. And I'm just going to open up to whoever passes the ball. That's it. What all of our setters love to do is to run in, right? And then they lose the rhythm, and they don't get a good move on these balls. So we tell them, like, just stand here and face the passer, right? So this is row two. So this is an easy, easy rotation as long as we make it easy. We have to have the discipline to make it easy. So we're going to start right here, right? We can see everything, and then we're just going to face the passer. That's it. And we're going to be really balanced. We can get a good rhythm. Just face the passer. Good. Nice speed. Nice speed. Just face the passer. Good. Get a good rhythm. Face the passer. Good. And then face the passer. Uh, so you can start facing the sideline. Yeah, you can see everything now, and then just face the passer. Good. Awesome. That was sweet. Nice rhythm. Good. All right, so she just did it. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about. We're going to warp speed. This takes years, obviously, to do. But All right, our rhythm. The rhythm is the last thing we get to, even though it's one of the most important things. But the rhythm just sets everything up, right? And this isn't always going to happen, but it's basically, we want to get a, basically get like a slow to fast rhythm. So our last step can be really dynamic. And if we're really dynamic off of our lead leg, it really helps us to finish fast, which helps us to create speed and all those things. All right, so you can see, hopefully you can see how everything built up into that. If we get an entry that allows us to read, right, that's going to allow us to take a good first step to the ball. If we take a good first step to the ball, we're going to have a chance to have a great rhythm. 
If we have a great rhythm, we have a chance to have a fast finish, right? So it's all linked, but you can see it in the rhythm. So but you just did it last time. So we just got to be really intentional on our first step, right? So our first step should reflect what we see off of the pass, right? So if we see this really beautiful pass, then our first step isn't going to be that fast, right? It's going to have this nice, slower first step into the ball, and then I get to be really dynamic and set, right? The only time I'm going to take a fast first step is if what on the pass happens? Yeah, if it's a laser beam pass, then I'm fast, or maybe I don't even move at all. But let's see if the first step can reflect what we see so we can be really dynamic at the end. And uh, I'm going to start spinning it to make it a little tougher now, so there's going to be some different passes. And again, let's just reflect what we see on our first pass, our first step. Good speed. So we might have more time if we get a good look on the platform. Good look on the platform. Better. Well, good. it's going to happen. It's volleyball. It's going to happen. Okay, hey, I thought that first step reflected what you saw. Nice job. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's just good. That's all right, you recovered. Good. Make sure we're not guessing. Just get the information off of the platform here, right? Good. Good, and we're just going to go a couple more minutes because we're almost out of time. So passers, or sorry, setters, uh, show me a posture. Oh, sorry, last wrinkle. All right, you guys, get to you guys get to pick what rotation you're entering from and make sure it's never the same twice in a row, all right? So you have all these different entry patterns you can do now. Go ahead and pick whatever you want. Now, as you're doing this, setters, we want to see our right go forward. Our right is our first step. Yes, that's it. That's the speed. Let's have two hitting lines, too, red and a, red and a go, red and a go. If you get balanced a little sooner, you'll be able to take a first step. Get balanced before she passes the ball. All right. Good rhythm. Good set. It's all starts with the read, setters. Good. Is that a five or a red? Okay, yeah, let's go faster. But hey, good job on your entry. Way to be balanced before she contacts the ball. Sweet. All right. Hey, give these ladies a hand. All right, great job. Thank you very much. You guys absorbed and applied a lot of information in a short period of time. Next time I see you, I expect you all to be perfect. Right now. Nice job. Thank you very much. Good. Any uh, questions? No? Yeah. Are you staying back to the net versus facing the passer? We basically, what, well, I can only have my back to the net on those longer entries, like row one, row two, I can't. But I want to be in a position where if the ball goes, I, I always want to be able to play the hardest ball effectively. So that's the ball going to my left. So I just want to be in a position where if the ball is going to my left, I can make a right, left, right move to it. And if my back is to this sideline and they pass over here, now I got to cross over and do a karaoke move, and nothing good happens when I'm going across my body. So I just want to be in a position where balls go here, I can still go right, left, right as often as possible. Because right? if, if I go off my right, I have options. Even if I can't set the quick, I can set here, I can set here. But once the ball gets over here, it just has to go outside or has to be a pipe. And then it's hard to control the accuracy of it also. Yeah. He asked, do we have a timing mechanism for our pipe? So our pipe is a first step set, and our BIC is a second step set. And I know men's game is going even faster than that. But the, the timing is controlled by what step the hitter is on when the setter is contacting the ball. So, uh, you know, for Canada, we might even start getting our third step on BICs, you know, like so that the better your players are, the faster you can go and still have some reliability with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
So he's asking, so you're trying to pass off, you're trying to set off. What happens when you still pass tight, which is going to happen, right? And that's the toughest move, but it's really not that big a deal. Uh, so maybe a row one situation. Back up. Right. So uh, maybe a row one situation. The ball's tight. It's the same thing. It's just right, left, right. We just tell them to jump straight up and down. And uh, that's the move. But that is the toughest move when it's going tight. So, yeah. I'm not sure what a 51 is. A, like a tight quick? Yeah. So he's asking if you're passing a meter or half off the net, what about when you're running quick? Right? Okay. Uh, it's the same thing. So we're going to... We're going to hit the quick at a really high level here, higher than we are right here. So it's just, it's just not a big deal. I mean, from, from zero to two meters, we can, yeah, we can run the quick just fine. The other, uh, definitely understand the concern with tight balls. I also want to reiterate, you're not trying to pass tight, right? So that, that's the most damaging thing possible. Another benefit to starting your setter off the net versus starting your setter on the net these passes become really good passes all of a sudden, right? So when my setter is a meter and a half off the net and we pass the three meters, I easily can get there and I can set the quick no problem. I'm super balanced. If I'm starting at the net and we set the three and we pass the three meters, which everyone in our gym is doing all the time, it's these balls become medium passes. Sometimes they almost have to set outside depending on how good your setter is. You see them kind of run into this ball and they have to go outside and if we had started them off the net, they could have gotten a lot more balance to it and at least set a red or have the ability to set the red. So that, that's a huge benefit of keeping our setter off the net, too. It's these passes at the three meter line, they all of a sudden they become pretty good passes. We're still relatively in system. So, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> she said, uh, This is fairly new. You're teaching at the national team level. Is it filtering down? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I hope so. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, for us, uh, we just want to be as accessible as possible and in, as visible as possible. So that's why we're here, you know, and being able to talk to you guys. And <coughs> this isn't the last time you have to talk to any of us also. I gave my email. I'll give it again, tblack at volleyball.ca. I gave my cell phone, 424-901-5571. You can text me anytime. Um, I can send you clips or send me Don't expect me to write a novel back, but I can definitely respond back. So we want to be as accessible as possible and, yeah, and in the state. So, I mean, I'll just 50-second history, you know. So uh, I think everyone on the men's game is relatively doing something like this. And they've actually kind of gone past this because of the power of the game. Uh, and the U.S. women's game is definitely probably, I don't know, like 80% there, 85% there. Um, and then internationally, it's some of it's caught on, some of it, but you know, honestly, I, we don't want them to do this stuff. You know, so we're, we we uh, we want to get really, really good at this stuff. But just like anything, the more success someone has, people start imitating it. So it's definitely going along, going along those lines. But one thing we're trying to do, Canada, like, can we be the best? All right, maybe we don't have the best athletes in the world. We have some good athletes, maybe not the best, but can we be the best trained team in the world? Uh, can we be the technically best team, and can we bridge the gap that way? And then. You guys keep doing the job you're doing and developing your athletes. Hopefully, as the, as the national team does better, more girls get excited about playing, and the whole thing grows. So that's the hope. So, what else? Anything else? All right. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, so. yeah.